Hey coders, what's up? It's Chris here, and today we're going to talk about PF query constraints. Now, there's a lot to cover, and it might even take two videos, so let's get started. First, I wanted to jump back to our parse instance, and just to review what we have here. So we have a contact class, and we have two rows of data. We added an email column, first name and last name. Next, let's take a look at the parse documentation. This is what we're going through here, and if you forgot how to get to this page, just go to parse.com slash docs, and then select iOS guides. And finally, let's go back to our Xcode project where we have a basic query here. So the code here is a basic PF query that is targeting the contact class. And then we're calling find objects in background with block. And this is the block of code that is going to execute after it performs this find objects query. And this block of code basically checks if there's an error or not. And if not, it's going to go through all of the returned objects and print out the first name value of each of those objects. Now this find objects query is going to return all of the rows in our contact class store. So right now we have two rows. But let's say we wanted to find something specific in that class. Well, here is where we can introduce different constraints and I'll show you guys how. There are a whole bunch of different ones and I'll demonstrate. So all I'm going to do is create a new query. So I'm going to say let query equals PF query and we're going to pass in the contact class name just like we did up here. But instead of performing the find objects in background right away, we're going to say query dot where key and I'm looking for this one equal to any object. So let's say that the key first name is equal to Tommy. And then next, after adding this constraint, then I would perform the find objects and background type of thing, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to show you these two lines that you need to know. So this is going to look through the contact class right here, and it's going to look under first name this key equal to Tommy, and it's gonna fetch that and return that. So Xcode is complaining about something here, definition conflicts with previous value. Okay, that's fine because we're just doing some demonstrations here. Let me just comment this out for a second and let's look at this next one, where not equal to. So where this one is, you're trying to look for all of the objects that have a key equal to a certain value. This one allows you to search for all objects where the key does not equal to some specified value. So let me just copy this line here. It's always going to be the same. And we're going to write query dot where key is, if you scroll down, not equal to. So we can say return all of the objects where first name is not equal to Tommy. So this would return our other row of data, which is John Smith. Now, if I wanted to add multiple conditions, I can. I can continue to do this where key and then keep adding to that query until I go query dot find objects in background with block. So this is going to perform an AND clause. The object is going to have to satisfy both conditions, as many conditions as you want to add, uh, for it to get returned. Okay, so that is the NOT equal to. I'm going to comment that out. Let's look at contained in and NOT contained in constraint. So let's say you have an array of names that equal something like Alice, Bob, and Mike and you want to return all of the contacts that don't have this first name. So you would say something like this. So let query equals new query, right, with the class name contact, and then you would put query dot where key, and you would say not contained in. So we want the first name to not be in the names. So you're passing this array into it, and you're saying return all of the objects where the first name is not contained in this array. Alternatively, if you wanted to search for all contacts where their first names are either Alice, Bob, or Mike, you would say something like query where key is contained in this one here, where first name contained in names. So that is going to return all of the contacts which have a first name of either Alice, Bob, or Mike. Okay, simple enough. Let's look at another one. 
where exists and does not exist. So what does exist and not exist mean? Well, if we look at our parse contact class, we have an email field, first name field, and last name field. All of them are set to some piece of data. Now it's possible that when we added a new row, we didn't specify a value for email. Maybe it wasn't provided. So this constraint lets you pull all of the contacts which have an email set. So you would do something like, let me paste that query there. Uh, so if I wanted to search for all contacts where the email must be set, I would say where key right here, where key exists, and you would pass in, uh, well, email. So that would return all of the contacts which actually have an email that is set. Alternatively, if we wanted to find all the contacts where some value isn't set, we would do where key does not exist email. And this would return all of the contacts which do not have an email specified. Okay, so that can come in handy. And don't forget that you can combine all of these constraints to really narrow down exactly what you're looking for. Okay, this next one is kind of cool and it works for strings. So if we wanted to search for all contacts where the name begins with a T or maybe Tom or some sort of prefix, we would use this constraint. We would say query dot where key has prefix. So it's going to search for, let's say, first name has the prefix of T or maybe TO, whatever string you want. And this according to our data set is going to return Tommy. John doesn't qualify as TO, so it's not going to get returned. And there's also another one, as you saw, where key has suffix, which is going to return all of the contacts which ends with a particular suffix that you specify. So let's say where first name has the suffix Y, ends with Y. If we have both of these constraints specified, then it's going to look for only contacts which start with TO and end with Y like that. Okay, and now let's take a look at one more here. So less than and greater than constraint. Let's say one of your fields is a high score or age or something like that. And you want to perform a query that compares numbers or uh, constraints numbers. So you would say where key is greater than, you also have greater than or equal to, and you also have less than or less than or equal to. So you have those four. So you can say where age, and I'm just making up this field because we don't actually have this field in our contact class, but we can say where the age is greater than 30. So that's going to return all of the contacts in our data store where the age is greater than 30. So I'm gonna stop here for today. And in the next video in part two, we'll go through the rest of them. But let's review what you have learned in this lesson. So we went through a whole bunch of different types of constraints that you could do, and you can mix and match any of them in your query, and you can add as many constraints as you want to a single query. But keep in mind that the data returned has to satisfy every single one of those constraints in order for it to be returned in your result set. So these are added as an end. So when you read them out, it would say where first name is not contained in names and where the first name is also contained in names. You can see how this query would return nothing because any object in the result set has to be in names, but also not in names. So that would never happen. This is probably a more realistic one right here. We're performing a query where first name has the prefix TO and first name has the suffix y. So there could be some contacts that has that prefix and suffix, like in our case, Tommy does, so that would get returned. And finally, don't forget that all we're doing here is adding constraints to the query. We're not actually performing the query, not until you, not until you run a method like find objects in background with block, and that's gonna actually run the query and then return the result set here in your block of code. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn more about query constraints and some filters like sorting and limiting the number of items. And we're also going to learn how to use or constraints. So if you wanted to return data that satisfies constraint A or constraint B, rather than what we've gone through today, it's all and. It has to satisfy constraint A and constraint B. All right, so thanks for watching and please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please share this video with your coworkers and family and friends. Thanks a lot and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.